in this uh, in this next video I'll be showing you how I determine the colors of paint that I'm going to need and the colors I will need to mix to achieve the colors in the redhead drake head now the first step for me is to to squint my eyes while I'm looking at photographs like this and uh, what that does is it, it blurs things out and it gives you solid colors that you can uh, use as your base coats so when I look if I squint my eyes and I look I see kind of a a orangey red and when I say orangey that means orange is more predominant over the red and in the cheeks I see an orangey red in the crest of the head I see more of a red orange where the red is more predominant and as it goes down to, to the back of the head and down the neck I see a uh, a reddish tint going to it and this is some iridescence that you're going to see uh, in a, on a mature adult um, redhead drake in his breeding plumage now the other color that I see is the darkish brown and I only make a dark brown so that I can come back and detail out the uh, breast feathers with with the ivory black and then I also see um, the same dark brownish black in the bill around the eyes and then there's a light blue that is uh, the coloration of the um, bill also kind of has some darker blue model modeling that goes on in the bill so those are the colors that I see on the uh, redhead drake the other thing to note is you see where the feathers are split here um, that shows you the base of the feather is is white or light lighter for sure as it gets um, deeper into the feather and toward the skin I like to look at the bird and think of what is the deepest color that I can actually see well I don't have these split feathers there on the neck in the same way but if you did it would be important not to just paint the whole thing darkish reddish orange you'd, you'd want to add the lighter um, base color of those feathers not doing that this time so uh, with that said, Now what I like to do is mix up my base coats, base colors for my base coats first. And uh, I'm going to start with Burnt Sienna you can see, hopefully you'll be able to see these colors as I squeeze them out onto my palette. And that's a reddish oxide kind of color but it's going to be um, too dark for this uh, to achieve the reddish orange that we want for uh, I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit of my yellow ochre deep 
and it's always a good thing to have my little bit of cadmium yellow deep because that's going to brighten things up when I want to achieve a brighter orangish red or a brighter reddish orange. So the first thing um, I'm going to do is mix up my orangey red I'm going to brighten it up just a little bit you know with this palette knife I'm able to push real hard and squeeze the paint that's underneath of it into a pile. It's not going to take a whole lot of this color. Now when you finish mixing your color, wipe it with a paper towel. Wipe your, your palette knife with a paper towel so that it's clean for the next time you need to use it. which will be for <clears throat> a redder orange. This one I'm using a, a little bit of alizarin crimson. Keep your hands clean too when you're working. If you transfer some paint from the tube or the cover onto your fingertips, be sure and wipe them clean so you don't transfer it onto your uh, carving or clothing or anywhere else. So I'm going to take and mix a little bit of this alizarin crimson and get a brighter red than I have with the and I'm going to brighten it up just a titch with some of the cadmium um, yellow deep and that gives us a more red orange than orange Red. This is more of a an ochre. I'm going to add a little bit of red to it. Bring it up a little. It doesn't take a lot. cheek color <clears throat> and again these are base colors we're going to come back and uh, do more after the base colors are achieved so the other the third color that I, I stated we needed we needed the red orange the medium blue, I'm saving that for a little bit later because I'm going to use this uh, bill as a handle. And then there's the dark brown that we need, I need for the uh, breast. So I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of cobalt blue. And a little bit of burnt umber and the burnt umber 
darkens the cobalt blue. Very nice dark brown. And I'll be using this darker brownish <clears throat> on the bill as well. For the dark areas on the bill. Well, it seems a little brown and I can see that when I... So I want to make it a little bit darker so I'm going to add a little bit more blue. And this will vary depending upon the amount of pigment that's in your paint. With acrylics, especially with the deco art, the uh, burnt umber is super pigmented where the ultramarine blue, um, you need twice as much ultramarine blue as you do in the burnt umber to mix a nice dark brown. And this is looking good for me now. You don't want to use black right off the bat when you're painting something um, that is essentially looking black at a distance. But you want to have some contrast in color. So if you paint it in dark brown and come back and add your detail with a real black, then you'll be able to... <clears throat> Uh, have some show the diff the the detail in these feathers uh, when you have some contrasting colors in them, not all solid one color. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull out my Grumbacher medium, where I'm only going to have use the medium. And I use this very sparingly. You can always add a little bit more. And then I'm going to pull out my turpentine and pour a little bit of that in there. Oh. With as, as expensive as this stuff is, uh, <laughs> it's a good idea to just use it sparingly and add more when you need to. Add a little bit more medium in there. There we go. Now, when you apply the the base coats, you're really wanting to get the paint into the detail that was burned because it's deep. And uh, if you don't work it into the depth of the detail, uh, you're going to find yourself looking at bare wood um, at different angles you hadn't expected it. So this is where the old Kalinsky sable. Um, filberts that are worn down come in handy. And uh, I'm going to start with the cheeks. Can, and I'm just going straight into the uh, Grumbacher. See that orangey red that we have going on there. And I'm just going to work it in real hard. And I'm using a consistency that's uh, that of maybe half and half. Not real watery, but not super thick either. Um, you want it to cover, but you don't want it to fill in detail. It's got to be thin enough to absorb into the surface of the wood. And when I said I was sealing the head, I'm not really sealing it. I'm using a sealer on the head to um, apply. When I apply it, 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 what it does is it makes the absorbency 
happen evenly. So, you know, for me to be saying I'm sealing um, my decorative with TKs is not really accurate because I'm not truly sealing the surface. I'm just um, sealing it a certain amount, like say maybe 75% so that it still is absorbent. So I see the orange coming right up and under the eyes, in front of the eyes. And after I get this first coat laid in, on one side I move to the other. Try and get these lights. <clears throat> don't expect complete coverage the first time around that this is something that's gonna be achieved um, a little bit at a time here not all at once so there's the front of that cheek I see it goes about back to here with that more orangey color I'm going to extend it a little further and all the way up to the top of the cheek. <clears throat> Whales are more accurate in the color they're going to be when they're dry than acrylics are. You have to account with acrylics for it to darken. You can see how the uh, brush really works well to uh, get that paint worked into the detail. The wood burned feathers. Step all the way underneath. Try not to get too much on the bill, but don't panic if you do. And coming back, cleaning that up and covering it with the right color. It's nice not to have too much to have to cover up though, so that's why I say, you know, try to be neat. You don't want to swish your brush in your medium either. You just want to dip it in there and let it suck up a little bit more of the medium so that you can bring it back to your palette and create a little bit more of a puddle of paint that you can go back to until it's gone. Then go get more. By the time you've worked the paint out of your brush and you're ready for more medium. Uh, you've worked out enough so that's not going to leave a whole lot of color contaminating. So, when you look at this from side to side, you want to be sure that you've applied the paint evenly. Even if you went a little bit too far, you want to be sure and do that because you want um, everything to look even from side to side no matter what. So uh, you 
went a little bit further on one side than you wanted to, then do the same thing on the other.